Tell me about why. What drove it right, yeah, in the beginning? Yeah. Like you come back to the university and you go, ah, simulation. This is what I want to do. How did that come about? Uh, um, well, when I came back from, from the UK to uh, St. Petersburg University, um, we uh, wanted to design some kind of abstract, cool modeling tool. We didn't know what for because we were in had zero business experience. And uh, I think what played great role at uh, first, uh, we, did, we all did have, I mean, all members of the group did have uh, very good um, mathematics, computer science uh, background. We, none of us had uh, any uh, s business simulation modeling background. So these were um, kind of the, the, the two main things. So uh, you guys, some of you probably may remember that in the 90s, object-oriented uh, development, object-oriented modeling was kind of big and hot topic. And um, uh, it was suggested, I mean, that uh, science was suggesting um, some ways to model things, meaning um, artificially created computer systems like distributed systems. So some probably may remember things like uh, UML or um, state charts. So we chose that as our foundation, built a tool, mm -hmm. um, and brought it to Winter Simulation Winter Conference Sim because uh, that was kind of the only conference we thought it could fit. So we were there uh, with um, software that was very unusual, and we talked to some people who immediately understood it's not possible to, it was not possible to explain how that stuff sure. can be applied uh, to any of the business problems like healthcare, manufacturing. However, uh, we were lucky to meet some people in there uh, uh, that actually uh, helped us to shape any logic. Who, who are those people, by chance? Uh, Do you know? Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, um, I will al always remember them. So um, the two, two guys who probably influenced, influenced us most is Mark Page and Lyle Wallace. I think by then they were with McKinsey, and then they were with PwC. And so uh, uh, these two guys are kind of super cool, top-level system dynamics modelers. They wanted to go beyond system dynamics paradigm, mm -hmm. and they were looking for something else. So believe it or not, that Mark Page was the one who uh, explained me uh, what agent-based modeling was about. I did, did not know such term mm -hmm. before Mark Page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they actually guided us, and we were, they, they wanted to shape, they were, uh, very practical, they wanted to shape any logic for their needs. So uh, for the next few years, we were kind of following their guidance, and uh, in 2004, uh, they thought that any logic was mature enough, so they um, organized this landmark Denver training where they brought like maybe 20 top industry modelers to introduce any logic to them, and many of uh, those guys are still uh, still our customers. <laughs> so Mark Page and Lyle Wallace, and uh, the other guy I w would like to mention is Professor Felix Breitnecker from uh, Technical University Vienna, Austria. Uh, he helped us a lot in the beginning to during our numerous visits to to Austria. He really really supported us. It's great. Thanks for that. So on that, though, that's the beginning of the product. So who was your first customer? Uh, I, it was Boeing. Mm, I think it was at the very first conference. And I don't, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the guy, but th he was uh, that type of guy who uh, wanted to try everything new. So, mm -hmm. okay, this is new, I'll buy it. So he bought a license. I don't know how um, for how long that's, license remain active, but then Boeing uh, became our customer. Yeah. And they still are, still are today, that's for sure. Yeah. Great. 
Um, in your opinion, what's been AnyLogic's biggest contribution to the simulation community? All right. Um, three things. Uh, first, we enabled commercial agent-based mm -hmm. modeling. I cannot say that we made agent-based modeling simple, but we made it simple enough to, so that industry modelers started using it. So that, that's number one. Number two, AnyLogic is actually a technology bridge between two very disconnected communities, discrete event and system dynamics. Uh, so, and that's uh, together with agent-based modeling, uh, radically expanded, um, I would say, the uh, abstraction tool set for a modeler. So this is um, number two. And number three, and this is what we're busy uh, with now, is we are converting simulations from, I would say, uh, short-term disposables that are being thrown away after the project is done to a longer lasting operational components of any enterprise. And this is why AnyLogic Cloud, also known as Model Manager, <laughs> Thanks. and this is why AnyLogic 9 and all this um, development that we're doing right now. Great, thanks for that. Um, and on that, I wanna kind of shift a little bit onto that. So now that you see models moving, becoming sticky in the mm -hmm. enterprise, as you will, and most people might be familiar with that term, we go from project-oriented things to operational-oriented things, and the life cycle of the model is changing, right, which is what we're all driving towards. Um, in your opinion, though, what will keep, is there any, what's preventing simulation and modeling mm -hmm. from becoming part of the mainstream? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right now, it's very boutique in a lot of areas, as you see from the audience, and we've known forever, lots of yeah, yeah. new faces as well, but how do we get it, how, what's keeping it or preventing it from becoming mainstream? All right, I will um, decompose your question into two. <laughs> so first, uh, why still not so many people are capable of creating simulation models? One, uh, so I'll answer that first. Mm -hmm. So that is true, uh, not so many. The reason is uh, m modeling requires pretty unique and rarely found skills. You know, the tools are progressing. Um, the coding has been made easier. It's not a problem to teach a student to code, right? But, uh, Therefore, by the way, I think that the message that no coding required is very wrong and stupid message to, uh, about a simulation tool. Now, uh, however, how would you teach a student to do this? Let's say you are to model movement of a truck from point A to point B, right? So for some problems, that movement should be modeled by, let's say, two events, uh, departure and arrival, right? Just two, two events, distant in time. In some other cases, uh, this exact same thing should be modeled as a continuous movement with acceleration and deceleration, right? And again, some uh, thirds, uh, when you saw some third problem, uh, that movement is just an instant increment or decrement of a counter in the model. I mean, how do you teach uh, a student to, or a modeler um, to distinguish those cases? In other ways, you know, choosing the right, right abstraction uh, is pretty much kind of an art, and that is why uh, I would say uh, there are not, uh, not that many, um, you know, 
modelers mm -hmm. or super cool modelers. Although, you know, if you know uh, more or less which abstraction level you're using, um, it's, um, it's not so difficult to, to teach somebody to use, for example, uh, a uh, process flow charts. So that's, uh, that's not so hard. Now, the other question is why um, simulation models, uh, the other part of your question, um, why simulation models are not used everywhere? And uh, I think that here, uh, reason partly is because most oh, uh, traditional simulations were, um, so to say, not built to live art after death, right? After the end. So most of simulations traditionally were remaining on the consultant's laptop. Mm -hmm. And when the project is finished and consultant is busy with something else, nobody knows how to run them how to connect to them, how to scale them, and how to uh, keep them up to date. Right. So here, uh, vendors uh, can do a lot. And this is what we're, um, we are doing with, again, the same, same um, set of software components like uh, the, uh, the cloud and the model manager. So we want models to be easy to run, always there, and easy to upgrade, uh, easy to, um, to, uh, to amend, to, um, and that is why, again, AnyLogic and uh, AnyLogic mm -hmm. Cloud and AnyLogic 9. Great, thanks. Uh, so on that, is, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, it's lack of cool modelers other than the people in this room, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, how does it become more mainstream, just availability of the model? So if it's becoming, if it's difficult, is that fair to say? Yeah. So yeah. then as technology evolves, you know, we obviously, we've seen a few presentations on, you know, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So can I get your opinion around the intersection of simulation and AI? and where that might be going, and is there any mm -hmm. other technology that follows onto that? Oh, that is interesting. So, um, looks like maybe like five, seven, ten years ago, it was already clear that if AI is ever to control uh, industrial objects like uh, manufacturing or supply chain or uh, business processes, then Simulation models are the only realistic uh, and safe risk-free environment to train and test AI. Now, on our side, I mean, any logic, we did a lot in that direction. So we um, created all necessary connectors. Um, so technically, we are ready. Now, on the AI side, uh, things were happening, let's say, slower than everybody expected. So, as we know, uh, many startup, uh, startups failed. And we're expecting the, uh, let's say, uh, a second uh, wave of interest from the AI and industry. And when it's there, we're ready. However, uh, the recent advances with different type of AI, uh, I mean, generative AI, uh, creates other types of opportunities. Uh, I mean, with regards to simulation modeling, and we're currently looking at some uh, awesome um, things that we can do with generative AI, but I don't want to speak about that <laughs> any further. All right, fair enough, gotcha. So on that, so we're looking at tech, new advances in technology, we're looking at continuing growth of trying to get simulation into the mainstream. So where do you predict the future? Give us your industry expert thought visionary of the future of simulation. Where are we going with this? Without saying too much, of course. Well, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we already um, talked a bit about it. Mm -hmm. So um, 
just to add a few things. First, mm, let's look at the, let's say, language and methodology um, standpoint. Uh, process flowcharts and discrete and modeling has been there forever, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, before I was born, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, if you can only imagine, you know, times like that. Now, system dynamics, even earlier, and uh, kind of these two concepts remain virtually unchanged until now. So to me, the only, on the kind of, let's say, language methodology side, the only, uh, the most recent advance is uh, actually uh, the unification, let's say, of the uh, approaches and some language elements that agent-based uh, modeling um, brought in, like state charts, for example, or uh, let's say the, the agent um, structure, agent-based structuring uh, of simulation models. That happened in early 2000s. Since then, you know, the tools have been improving. Uh, but nothing really interesting um, was happening. So I anticipate that the next uh, advance on the language, on the how do you, you know, represent things, how do you model things, on that side will come from, I will not say what, but mm -hmm. you guys can probably guess. Okay, and then um, the, other, the other thing is, Again, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the most impor important thing that we're trying to do is to change the usage paradigm of simulation models. And, you know, digital twinning, um, RL, and like, let's say, operational decision support tools, they all require uh, simulation modeling, and they, they all require different let's say, um, differently equipped simulations. Um, you know, mm, always up and running, again, easy to connect with, and um, upgradable um, and uh, editable, let's say, at any time. So if we enable that, then we will make it easier to use simulations uh, operationally. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, John. <sighs> thanks. Thank you, sir. Thanks.